candid conversations with emerging artists and industry leaders about all things paper flowers. Through this podcast, we hope to continue to share knowledge, connect all of us together, and elevate the artistry of each and every one of us. Hello, I'm Quinn Wen. I'm Jesse Chu. I'm Priscilla Park. Our mission is to share, connect, and elevate the paper floral industry. We are some of the voices behind the Paper Floors Collective. Welcome to our podcast, Paper Talk. You are listening to episode two. Today, we're gonna to talk to Mike Benson of Cartafini. So we're about to bring Mike Benson of Cartafini on, and we were chatting for a few minutes before starting, and it turned into a half an hour long conversation. It felt just like a reunion. It did. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's so much fun to talk to. After years of using his paper and conversing online, we finally got to meet Mike in person last month at the Paper Florist Masterclass. It's always so special and meaningful to finally put a face to a name. Mike is so business savvy and he's very charming. So we can't wait for you to hear his story and how he started his crepe paper business. Mike Benson is the owner of Cardafini, an online distributor of Cardo Tecnorossi Italian crepe paper. Cardafini is based in Southern California, USA and supplies paper to artists and florists worldwide. This episode is sponsored by Jerry Kier, a supporter of the paper flower community. And we wanna wish Jerry Kier a happy birthday week. We wanna wish you many, many years. We're so grateful that you are a friend of the paper florist community. Thank you for tuning into our first podcast last week. We're overwhelmed by the positive and supportive feedback we have received from our followers and from the paper flower community. We received a personal note from Eileen Lim of Petal and Bloom, and she says, love that there is now a podcast for paper florists. So great to be able to listen in on your opinions and stories. Thank you for sharing. Thank you to our listeners for subscribing and writing a review for our Paper Talk podcast. We would love to read your thoughts on our show, so make sure to subscribe to our channel. You can find our podcast on iTunes, YouTube, and soon other platforms. You're listening to episode two of Paper Talk. Today, we're going to talk to Mike Benson of Cardiffini. Mike Benson is the owner of Cardiffini, an online distributor of Carto Tecnorossi Italian Crepe Paper. Cardiffini is based in San Diego, California, USA, and ships Italian crepe paper worldwide. Hi, Mike. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. We are so excited to have you on our second ever episode. We're just so amazed at the amount of uh, papers that you've been able to have here in the United States and actually be able to send it out pretty much anywhere in the world. That's right. Obviously, the primary market is the United States. That's where most of my sales come from. But yeah, absolutely, every, every week we have uh, sales from all over the world. That is just amazing. And we love all the amazing colors and especially with the Tiffany Turner colors that just came out this year. It's just been amazing to see how the paper, the Italian crepe paper has evolved and changed over the years. So do you know, when did you actually start your company? It's roughly 2008. The story is I, people always ask me how I got into it. I always kid that, oh no, I've been wanting since I was six years old, but that's <laughs> <laughs> that weird. But what happened is uh, I had a friend who was teaching English as a second language in Italy for a couple of years. And she, uh, she had gotten a bouquet of flowers from a, student and it was wrapped in this beautiful Italian crepe paper. Uh, she thought it was wonderful. She came back to the United States and found a supplier, started up a business, basically trying to sell to mainly United States florists, fresh flower florists, in kind of the same way to uh, use this little curling machine that we curl the flower uh, or the crepe paper, wrap the, um, the flowers. So did that for a bit, um, had a little bit of success, but I don't think it was, she decided to get out of business, had it, you know, got married, had some kids. And I said, you know what, I'll I'd like to purchase the inventory and, and take that over. Uh, and I tried doing relatively the same thing for a while, but it didn't do a lot. Uh, it wasn't really the fresh floors that were getting around it. European floors knew all about it, but not really American. They're pretty much um, wanted the, the tissue paper. So after a while we decided, we put it on the internet and we started getting sales. And it turned out that the crafting community was the one who got around this paper. This is the stuff that they've been looking for, as it turns out, um, instead of the, the paper that they were used to or could could readily buy maybe in, in hobby stores. Very thin and not really very workable. So that's kind of how it, how it started and grew. Um, I was gonna say, that's so interesting. Um, what, can I ask you what you were doing before the paper flower business? Or the paper, sorry, selling paper, crepe paper business? Uh, actually, insurance sales. How boring. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> I'm always curious because 
you know, my, my own life has kind of taken a trajectory that was unexpected. So, I mean, it's not every day, like you said, it's not like you dreamed about having a paper business since you were six, but I mean, these opportunities come and you kind of, you know, you kind of take them. So interesting that I, I'm assuming you're just bored of insurance. <laughs> well, that's true, of course. Uh, everybody's bored with insurance, uh, but uh, but it's so important. <laughs> yeah, but I'd always wanted, you know, I always wanted to have uh, my own business. I have more of an entrepreneurial uh, bent, and I uh, wanted. I was always looking for some opportunities, that, the ability to have my own business, to be my own boss, that kind of thing. So, and I actually did that for a while. It certainly wasn't paying the bills. It was more of a hobby for quite a while. Uh, and so I was doing both for a while, but there was a turning point where it actually one day gets to the point where, oh, this is all I really need to do. And that's when I went full time with that. And I'm sure that probably happens with many of the paper artists that you deal with all the time. Uh, we saw that in master class. People have both jobs and then eventually they're able to make the transition to a full time paper floral artist, become a business and they can pick their niche. Um, I have a question about um, how you got connected with Tiffany Turner, because a lot of us first discovered crepe paper or Italian crepe paper through her work. Mm -hmm. So I know you guys have been working together for quite a while. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Tiffany Turner goes way back to almost the beginning when we first started putting our paper on uh, the internet. I can't remember if she reached out to us or my wife at the time. Uh, she was my partner with, in the business. Maybe it discovered her. I really, I'm not sure how that went, but... He was early on, probably in maybe 2009 or so, she reached out to us and, and bought some of the paper. And at that point, you know, she was actually just starting, she was self-taught uh, this whole process. And you probably know that story, but, and then she just, she started creating in her own mode and her, her obviously her claim to fame is those giant format flowers and really still is. Uh, and of course she loved the structure and still does the structure, the, the stretchability, the heavy weight of the paper, because it really holds up to her type of large format flowers. And we did some tutorials together, which still exist on my site, some great tutorials. And since then I've always, we've kind of worked together and now she's displaying her art. It really is fine art in galleries. In fact, she has one going on right now in San Francisco. Yeah, Margie uh, told us about that. And she said that she met you in San Francisco yeah. with the gallery and that was so much fun. Can you tell us how long is our exhibit up for, do you know? Uh, it's, I think it was, it, it closes out, I want to say June 12th. Actually, I have a banner on my site that, there, a blog post on my site that, that tells all about the show, the dates and whatnot. I want to say June 12th, I'm not sure, or it could be all the way through June, but it is on our site. Uh, those, she has, I believe, seven pieces and they're all for sale. I think she's already sold a couple. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, and the, the theme of it, it's really great, you know, what befell us. And she's making a comparison between the, uh, because she does like to create these large format flowers, but not in a perfect sense. Hers, she likes to show, as in nature, the flowers actually, the beauty is very fleeting and it will, you know, they will degrade over time. And she's making a, a comparison of, of how, you know, that in itself is beautiful. And she's also drawing comparisons with, you know, women, you know, and how that can that seems so unfair. I don't know how she put it, but it's really a wonderful comparison uh, and the, the, the show's theme to her work. You're an online distributor. Do you have a retail space at all? I mean, for example, if I lived in the area and I wanted to pick up some paper without paying for shipping, or I have a ton I need it right away, is that possible? Do they just reach out to you or? Do yeah, we don't have any retail space. I've been asked that a few times. Occasionally, I do have people that either live in San Diego or have visited, I'm glad to make arrangements to meet with them or have them even come by our warehouse. And they get all excited because there they are um, <laughs> with the full palette there in real life. And they're like kids in candy stores. So it's kind of fun to watch them do that. But uh, other than that, no, not really. Uh, no retail space to speak of. Um, I wish I had known that because when I was living in California, I was like two hours away and there would be times where I was so desperate because I was so last minute ordering. I was like, I wonder if I can just call him and ask if I can come down and get some paper. <laughs> <laughs> I have a brilliant idea for you. Once a year, you should have an open warehouse sale and just yeah. have an open house and people can come down and just buy whatever they need. I like that idea. All right. I'm going to noodle with that. All right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> We're flying down, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
You know, bring us so, a suitcase. <laughs> like, can you tell us, for people that are not that familiar with Italian paper um, or in the weights, can you tell us the different types that you carry on your, um, your site? Well, currently, you know, the, the number one paper is the 180 gram. That's the heavyweight bread and butter for, from the beginning because it is such a, the product is so stretchy and uh, heavyweight that it really stands up. And you can actually stretch it out and manipulate it. And I know the artists do that. Sometimes they stretch it out to the point where it becomes almost a lighter weight. And then we also carry the full line of the 60 gram. That's the middle to lightweight crepe paper. And that's become more and more popular. As I said, business uh, and industry and community has talked to each other. They learn about the different types of paper that everybody's using and then they experiment with it. And as their craft grows, they naturally want to expand into other types of paper to see what they can do. So really those are the two right now, really two full on. Oh, and there is 140 gram. I carry 10 colors in what is a water resistant. That's kind of a um, legacy from when we were doing the more of the trying to sell into the florist industry. Obviously, they're going to need paper that is resistant to water uh, when they're wrapping with flowers. And I still get some of that. It's a little lighter weight, but uh, we still offer that. Uh, actually, I'm going to be including, I have several colors of Italian tissue paper that I'm going to be introducing in the next month or so. Actually, I'd be interested in knowing if that's anything that this uh, paper flower uh, floors community would be interested in would use. Um, so I'm anxious to know that. That will be so exciting. Um, mm -hmm. You will have to let us know when you have that available for us Absolutely. to take a look at. Absolutely. What fun. <laughs> so I have a really interesting question. I think a lot of people, they do not understand why Italian crepe paper is called 180. Can you tell us like why, because it's not really about, it's the weight of the paper, it's the 180. Can you, do you know the technical definition of why it's called 180 GSM? Well, it's 180 grams, so mm -hmm. that is how the Italians grade their paper. You know, much like, I guess, even copy paper that we're all familiar with. Mm -hmm. pound or whatever it's that same so obviously you need a context otherwise it means nothing to us once you're used to that that context 80 pound okay well then i know anything that's you know i know something's going to be a heavier weight or a lighter weight in terms of of that particular paper and that is what it is so one of the in this instance the higher the weight the 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 heavier that paper so thus the 60 gram is quite a bit lighter now i know that others like the german paper they tend to do it by stretchability which is a really valuable and description in ottawa especially for this community because stretchability is such a key component of what you do so and then i know we can add in that kind of verbiage to to describe our paper and maybe i should add that more on our site so to give people an idea that aren't used to it because truly the 180 gram has tremendous stretch. Literally, you could stretch that twice the size and, and, uh, and you would have gigantic, but you would lose a lot of the characteristics of the crepe that make it so special mm -hmm. if you went that far. Yeah, I love that our paper florist, we experiment with paper so much. And I love the flexibility of your Italian crepe paper because if I wanted a very heavy structure, I don't stretch it out as much. But if I want a more delicate look, it's so easy to make that happen by just stretching it out to a certain stretchability of it and then cutting it and forming it. You can still form your petals because I mean, I use your paper for both large and small flowers. So I love the flexibility of having that and also the color range. And it's so easy to like paint and color your paper. I, I love it a lot. Oh, wow. That's really great to hear. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I learn about my paper all the time from talking to the artists, things that I didn't even know. I wouldn't know unless I was myself a paper artist. Now, I've tried my hand a little bit, but uh, it, it's truly an amazing craft. But well, we love the colors. I mean, like Quinn said, the colors are just so intense. Um, it's really hard to, for example, dye your own paper in an intensity that the Italian crepe paper comes in. It just... I mean, DIY dyeing is very different from manufacturer dyeing. You have to use a ton of products to get that intensity. Um, how much say do you have in terms of the types of colors that um, are made by the Italian manufacturer? I'm sorry, how many what? How, um, how much say do you have? Like, do you have their ear in oh. terms of, you know, if we want a really, really, really light color, would you be able to, would you be able to, you know, suggest that? Well, part of that has come about uh, in that kind of put together Tiffany Turner with Cardiotechnica Rossi, and that's partly where those colors came. She has two collections now. So we have had some success in 
trying to instill some new colors that are specifically very important for this community, especially in the U.S. It's not going to be the same everywhere, obviously. But yes, and I try, to, and we when we when I do have meetings with uh, with Cardo Technica Rossi, they are receptive to to what this market wants. I'm happy to say, probably a few years ago, it wasn't so much. They were more concerned about the amount of their own production. That's great. That's great to hear because mm-hmm. I mean, Quinn was talking about earlier. She was telling us about. Um, you know, German crepe paper and coloring your own. And, you know, obviously Leah Griffiths made her own colors too, but it'd be really, really cool if um, the Italian manufacturer could also be more receptive to, you know, suggestions from ourselves because we're the ones who are using the paper, right? And we've got, you know, um, Priscilla loves the, the baby pink, but now that we have the very pale pink, it's like, you know, getting to um, crew, well, not necessarily crepe, but, you know, have a little bit of influence and let the manufacturer know that, oh, these colors, this is what we want, you know, um, these, especially these really light, light colors that are so difficult to, to achieve if you're going to bleach it or if you're going to, you know, create bulk uh, amount of blush colors, like blush is like, you know, so, so popular. Yes. No, actually, that was funny. I think, I think it was Margie, actually, that, said, I want this, you know, this blush, that ombre color. I want, but I want this color on the side of the ombre that's completely, you know, a solid. So, and I will be taking that request to Carter Technica and saying, this is a good idea because this is such a popular color, you know. And we're all, it would yeah. sell out. Yeah. <laughs> and we're yeah. all shaking our head because we totally agree with that. Yeah. And sometimes we want that just solid color on that Pacific ombre and mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, we have to cut everything out just yeah. so we can get that color. I have so right. much excess of that middle section of the paper because I just cut <laughs> off the. <laughs> That's a great, yeah. And so there's a good example of that type of thing. So, and I think they're more and more receptive now of these types of things. So, you know, I mean, they're interested in growing their business, obviously, and providing just like I am, being the most value as possible to their customers. I'm encouraged every time I talk with them that they're, they're looking to do more and more, especially with the U.S. market. I think it's still, it's just at a point where it could grow even more and more. As I said, the, some other markets mm-hmm. have been buying this crepe paper from, from the Italians for a long time. Russia is a gigantic market, and we know there's a lot of paper artists there. So there's no reason why the United States can't be uh, right there in that, in that field. So how can we help you um, promote your paper even more and to get more buying power from the Italian factory to say, this is the color we want. And how can we, how can we help you with that? Well, I mean, um, as I said, every time I speak with, with artists like you, and I mean, as I said, the masterclass was a great learning experience. I, I really got a lot of insight from all different artists, uh, paper florist crafters about what they use and what they want. This kind of thing is really important to me. If you ever have comments, suggestions, you can always email me directly, you know, direct message me on Insta, whatever. Really would love to hear it. I want to be able to deliver that message to my Italian supplier, Carter Technica Rossi, and say, this is, this is something you should really consider creating, whether it's a new color or maybe a different type of crepe paper and, and see where they're at with that. Um, so input is really the most important. If you've got ideas and you're missing something or you'd like to see something that I have no idea about, I would love to hear it. We can definitely spread the word for you. Um, And I was, since you're talking about growth, um, we've all noticed a huge growth in your um, Instagram and your Mm. website. And there's so much content that you all are putting out lately and tutorials and things like that. And I think that's really valuable, especially for newcomers to Italian freight paper, because they don't always know how to use it. So do you have plans to expand on that anymore? Absolutely. In fact, we're growing, we want to grow our content on our website uh, beyond just adding products, which we love to do, actually putting in place supplies we really didn't have before. And I think that just makes sense. Hopefully some new types of products uh, in the paper area. But we also want to grow the content in terms of inspiration. You know, that will be photos and pics of our customers' creations that we can post on there. We also want to reach out to these very talented artists, have them collaborate with us on tutorials, written and video. Uh, that we can post on there as inspiration and and learning. Uh, And then we also want to uh, add a section that uh, for artist profiles to really celebrate the artists that have really brought their craft to uh, a really high point. 
So those are some initiatives we have right now to really grow the content of the site, to be more valuable, not just in offering paper for sale, but for information, inspiration, and learning. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, you've been so support. I mean, at the masterclass too, I mean, you learned, but we learned from you. Oh, well, I'm glad. It was the first time we saw your face. Yes. Mystery man emerged. Mike. So nice. Man behind the paper. Yeah. It's yes. So nice to know that we can, like, when we email you, we're talking to you. When we're ta- when we're buying bulk from you, we're, you know, talking directly to you, and you mm-hmm. care. It's. I think it makes a huge difference in terms of um, having that connection within our community and supporting each other. Mm-hmm. That we know that be- the person behind the name has a face and cares. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's what I've done from the beginning. Um, you know, I am very, very hands-on and I still enjoy it. It's been 10 years or so and I enjoy it more than ever because especially in recent years, I think I've really, uh, the, the, the artists, the, my customers, they've really embraced what we offer and we do the same. We're astonished by the creations of this simple raw material that we provide. It's exciting. I mean, I don't know how people can say that, you know, certainly not in the insurance world. So uh. <laughs> so if someone wanted to purchase from you um, in bulk, like Priscilla, how, do, how, how does someone go about doing that? I mean, we're, we're always talking about, you know, um, there's certain, certain places that offer wholesale, mm-hmm. um, pricing and shipping. And can you tell us a little bit about that? I do have customers that I, I get usually weekly inquiries for wholesale inquiries. Could be a customer like Priscilla, who was buying uh, just on our website for years, I suppose. Obviously, her business got to a point where she felt like, well, I'm buying quite a bit. Maybe it would make sense to, to buy wholesale if it's available. Reached out to me easily. And, and I said, okay, ours is pretty simple. We try to make it fairly easy. You know, we have a minimum. It's only 60 rolls, and that's six zero. But that can be broken down into five roll increments for the 180 and 10 rolls for the 60 uh, because those are the inner pack. So theoretically, you could order 12 different colors of five each and you've hit the minimum. But we also want to make sure you have a resale license, which you should if you're operating a business. Uh, besides those two, there's an on- that ongoing minimum and a resale license. Usually, we're happy to have you as a wholesale customer. For a lot of our customers, it makes sense whether they're operating a retail store and want to resell the rolls as a going concern or they're using them as Priscilla for instance does as a raw material to sell and resell her own creations that are made from the paper it doesn't really matter to us that's perfect perfect yeah. uh, what is the price difference between your wholesale and retail it's it's in the neighborhood of half as much as it would be for retail that's great i so, mean especially uh, if people are making big flowers where they need like 5 to 10 rolls that's absolutely. a significant difference in terms of the pricing Oh yeah, and as as I said, it's uh, it's not for everyone. Some people maybe just beyond, you know, just not quite there, but maybe they're getting there. But that's one of the great things about this industry is um, I think there's enough interest and movement out there that artists like yourselves are able to to grow your business to the point where yeah, uh, that's that's a good problem to have. I need more paper. More us. <laughs> Give us all the paper. paper. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's at these different stages. So everyone starts small and then, you know, uh, and then they hopefully will grow to the point where it's something that uh, maybe they can make it a business. That's amazing. So I know you've just released a new line this year. Do you plan to have more new lines released in the next coming years? Are you referring to... um, Uh, Tiffany Turner, the new line that just came out. Yeah, That's actually her second collection. I mean, she had a line of, uh, I believe it was eight colors four years ago and this is her second collection that she's curated uh, inspired the bottom line is anytime carter technica releases new colors lines whatever i'm carrying it almost without exception every single thing i carry every single color that they have every single skew within those weights and there's some weights that i don't like a 40 gram I haven't carried, but I may end up doing. Um, as I said, uh, I think the artists are discovering these papers, so there's maybe room for these. Who knows? Uh, it's worth experimenting with. Finding out, is the 40 gram, you know, something that the paper artists can use, you know? Mm-hmm. And if it is, I'm happy to carry it and be able to offer that as well. So uh, that's the short, long answer is yes. If there's new ones coming out, which they tend to be doing every year now, then I will be carrying it. And we really appreciate you bringing in the Italian grape paper into the U.S. So it it makes it easier for us to purchase it. I'm so glad. Where would I be without you? 
<laughs> well, we hope to support you long into the future. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very happy about the way things are going with, uh, with this industry, this movement. Um, it's, it's been remarkable, especially over the last couple of years, how it's grown kind of by leaps and bounds, even just in the last couple of years. It took a little while for it to gain steam, but I think, you know, thanks to maybe social media platforms like Instagram and whatnot, uh, people are really discovering this and are inspired to do it. Some of them are one-off and some people go on to make it a lifelong passion. Perhaps one last thing before we go. How can artists be featured on, let's say, your social media or on your website? That's a great question. They could certainly direct message directly off of Instagram or one of those platforms. Uh, I would probably encourage them to maybe reach out to me directly, Mike at Cartafini.com. I'm happy to uh, you know start a conversation. Sometimes that's a little easier um, to exchange information, but yeah, I can get a little more information about what they do, uh, get some pictures, but either way would work. Then we can start a discussion on how we might either work together or we can feature them we'd welcome that yes and i also want to give you a huge shout out i had reached out to mike two years ago when i did the cherry blossom and so he was all on board and Mm -hmm. helped me get all the papers to help me create six different window installations in seattle so that was pretty spectacular paper was featured on nordstrom so that was amazing too so i thank you so much (laughs) oh it was my pleasure and those are exactly the kinds of things that we like to collaborate with with artists it it helps you it helps us promote you it helps us promote our paper as uh i mean it's one thing to hold up a roll of paper and wow that's interesting but i don't know what to do with that showing what it was done with it um and it's dramatic and that's what we're here for we're helping you to find different platforms and different ways to use your crate paper and we love it so much well keep it up (laughs) keep it up keep it coming and we're, we're loving to post it on our website and our social, and uh, it just keeps rolling. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for joining us today. We really appreciate all the information you gave to us, and we love chatting with you. And it's so wonderful to see you again ah. after the master class that was just last month. I know. <laughs> it's like we're all together all over again. It's wonderful. So uh, hopefully the next one, you know, hopefully that's in the works. The next master class. Fingers crossed, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, right. Mike. Make sure you check out the show notes on the Paper Talk blog for links and references to topics we talked about today with Mike.